<coughs> Testing. Da 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 Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and yeah, we got a few changes already happening in the studio. You guys see this new little arm thing here. This is more for the podcast than anything, but I'm trying to test the audio out here. Uh, so we're doing this video today, but not because of this, this just is what it is. I want to talk to you guys about the Nintendo Switch Pro, or the Switch 2, the Switch XL. I know, well, let's not say Switch 2 because I didn't for his next gen, but some sort of mid-generation refresh for switch and its possibility on coming this year now we will have a small note about some actual news here so we got some news that the reveal of goldeneye obviously could be coming quite soon but before we get into that i want to remind you that we are giving away a nintendo switch oled we are giving away a playstation 5 or an Xbox Series X. The winner gets to choose a current gen console of choice. To enter, head to the gleam.io link down in the description. If this is your first time here, I would appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe as well. All right, so let's just get right into uh, the initial little bit on GoldenEye. Well, we're gonna put timestamps here. Let's talk about the GoldenEye bit and then we'll get into the general Switch Pro conversation. So, uh, Venture Beat journalist Jeff Grubb, you guys know who Jeff Grubb is, right? Like, he's been around, uh, you know, works at Giant Bomb as well. Uh, he put out a new uh, Grub Snacks show on Giant Bomb, which is a premium show uh, at that outlet. Uh, and he says that Microsoft is likely to announce the revival of GoldenEye 007 uh, sooner rather than later, maybe in the next few weeks. He said, I think that Microsoft is going to be the one to announce that first. Now, He's referencing the fact that, you know, Nintendo could announce it. And he said, I think this game is probably coming pretty soon. I think in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that's pretty much where it ends there. Also, if you can't tell by him implying it, it sounds like it's going to be coming to Switch as well. But Microsoft's going to be the one to initially announce it before Nintendo jumps on and goes, yeah, by the way, it's also coming to Nintendo Switch. So uh, that's going to be really cool. Uh, hopefully it comes out here this spring. We've been long waiting for this to happen. Uh, maybe there'll be online multiplayer with it or something. I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty excited just to see the original GoldenEye from the Nintendo 64 potentially coming back. We know Nintendo uh, actually got restrictions listed on it out in Germany. So Nintendo still has a, a, a very much a vested interest in this, even though there's a lot of debate over whether Nintendo even still owns any publishing rights on the game. Doesn't seem to matter. Uh, they, they did fight a court case for, on behalf of the game and yeah, I, I would assume that Microsoft, just like with Banjo-Kazooie, would let this game come out on Switch. Now, that being said, let's get into the general Switch Pro conversation because this came up after I read a thread over on Famiboards. For those who don't know who Famiboards are, it's a nice little gathering of Nintendo fans. Not a lot of content creators there. Uh, I think I'm one of the few YouTubers actually there. And yeah, like any community, it can be polarizing. But this person called Aron Prime put up a thing saying, uh, I, the Switch Pro will launch with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and a theory. And I want to read his theory. And then I also want to add uh, some of my own thoughts and context to this theory because I do believe that a Switch Pro could arrive this year year i thought it could arrive last year obviously we had all those rumors and reports but that's besides the point i do think it could arrive this year and i think nintendo sticking to the whole switches in the middle of its life cycle actually helps support this theory but let's get into what this person said in regards to xenoblade chronicles 3 so ever since we didn't get the switch pro last year i firmly in the camp that nintendo won't do it and we'll go straight ahead to switch 2 in late 2023 or early 2024 but something is in the back of my head tells me that may not be the case and the comments by nintendo that the switch is still in the middle of its life is well probably bs so hear me out. We know from Imran, he's talking about Imran Khan, he used to work at Game Informer, now he works at Fanbyte. Uh, he said that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was supposed to come out last year. So this was supposed to be a 2021 title, uh, but it's safe to assume that obviously didn't happen because of COVID. Similarly, we can also assume that if there ever was a plan to launch a Pro in 2021, it was obviously significantly hindered by COVID. And, you know, adding to this, we already know that like this whole COVID thing and the demand is, is crazy. You know, Nintendo finished in third place uh, for the month of January in the MPD for like the first time in a long time. And it's not because nobody's buying Switch. It's because literally the president of Nintendo told us to start 2022, Nintendo's massively behind on manufacturing. He, they warned us this was going to happen. So yeah, Nintendo just can't make enough current Switches. Clearly, it'd be really hard to launch a more powerful system in this sort of environment. 
That being said, Aram Prime goes on to say, if we put these two thoughts together, the idea that Switch Pro was supposed to come last year, so was Xenoblade Chronicles 3, according to Imran Khan, we could come to the conclusion that, that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was going to be a showcase for the Pro, much like how Metroid Dread was for the OLED. This goes along with Imran Khan's previous reports that Monolith was having issues with putting the game's scope on the original Switch. And this is like actual things that Imran Khan said, which inferred they were making it for the Pro and just making it backwards compatible. This also makes me believe that the Pro would have come out either in November or December, since I highly doubt they would have released Metroid Dread and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 on the same day. Others believed that the Pro was supposed to come out simultaneously with Breath of the Wild 2, but let's think about this for a second. If Nintendo marketed the Pro as the best way to play Breath of the Wild 2, it would have skyrocketed demand for the system, something they probably wouldn't have been able to match. Thus, it would be smarter to launch a system with a more niche, though similarly scaled title and make sure that by the time Breath of the Wild 2 comes out in 2022, the system would have been widely available and easily gettable. That obviously would make a lot of sense from a business perspective. So assuming that was the, indeed the original plan, what's to say they've simply pushed it back rather than abandoned it? Many, myself included, believe that Breath of the Wild 2 will be the holiday game, and I think Nintendo will release the Pro alongside Xenoblade Chronicles 3 two months before, this will be in September, because that's when Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming out, before their most anticipated game is to get everyone to prepare for it. This will then also extend the arrival of Switch 2 to either late 2024 or early 2025, since Nintendo lately likes to keep a two year in between new hardware releases. Obviously, then releasing the Pro this September would go against that, but since it's less than a year from the OLED. But you have to keep in mind that this wasn't the original plan, and this thing could have been seen the light of day in November or December of 2021. More importantly, this potential delay for the Switch 2 lines up with them describing the Switch as being in its middle years. So I'm, maybe I'm overthinking this and just connecting dots that aren't even there, or do you think this might be possible? And to his point, I think there is a nugget of possibility in this, and this is why we're talking about it today. Because obviously, if the video was, no, guys, we're not gonna get a Switch Pro this year. That's it, that's the end of the video. But I do think a legit argument does exist for the Nintendo Switch Pro to still come out this year. Obviously, Nintendo repeatedly, now three years in a row, hauling the Switch in the middle of its life cycle, supports a still a mid-gen mid refresh because if you're still in the middle and you release a new upgraded platform in the middle, that would still be a mid-gen refresh. So it still could work in terms of the timing. I know some people think the timing's off. We should get a Switch Pro or a Switch 2 in 2023 or 2024. And I understand there's still a, an innate desire for that, but the Switch is selling so well and Nintendo wants to keep this generation going for as long as humanly possible that I do actually see a potential future here where, <clears throat> hey guys, guess what? The Nintendo Switch Pro does come out and Nintendo does extend the life another three to four years. I don't think that this is some crackpot crazy theory to throw out there that the Switch Pro could actually still be a real thing and that developers really did have it last year on the dev side. They really were making games for it and Nintendo just decided we can't get this thing out the door. There's no way we can get enough units available now. So if they're just still manufacturing units and units and units and more units, it obviously will be significantly ready to go by launch. It could also explain why Nintendo is magically out of nowhere struggling to deliver units now when COVID was an even bigger problem for manufacturing <clears throat> January of last year, uh, in case you were unaware the middle of the pandemic, the highest peak of the pandemic, factories being shut down. Nintendo didn't have as much of a problem with the Switch units then as they are now, right? But why would they suddenly be manufacturing less units now than they were then, even though the pandemic's gotten better? Could it be? Could it be because part of their manufacturing lines are dedicated to a completely different platform that's not released yet? It kind of lines up, doesn't it? So you start to think about this. Why would Nintendo do this? Oh man, it's just a year after the OLED. Well, one, the OLED, and I've said this this entire time, the OLED is just a replacement for the original Switch. I think we've known this this whole time and we've just been living in denial because they're charging $50 more. I don't think they're always going to be charging $50 more. Now, obviously, I think the OLED is just simply a replacement for the red box Nintendo Switch. I think that's always been the plan. Essentially, hey, release the OLED. That's eventually going to phase out the other Switch. And then boom, you come in with the more expensive $400 Switch Pro and you call it a day. And I still think Nintendo is going to maybe stick to those plans because let's say they were manufacturing at one point last year, trying to mass produce Switch Pros and they just couldn't get enough. 
they're not just going to throw those units out. Nintendo would obviously still just keep making more of them until they could release it. Because think about this, right? Let's say the Switch Pro comes out and it does include 4K upscaling. Let's say that's really the big feature here. Yeah, you got your OLED screen on it. But the big, big feature is, hey, look, we can now upscale games to 4K so they look even better on your 4K televisions. That's the big feature. They don't tout how much more powerful it is, even though it might be more powerful. They don't tout how much more processing or RAM or whatever else they might include in it. Or, oh my gosh, we're using the new Tegra whatever yeah, like whatever. Let's say they don't tout the power, but it's really the selling points 4K. I think that this is a brilliant idea. This is akin to when people like Michael Pachter and others wanted Nintendo to release a Wii HD in 2010, and they never did that, and then we got the Wii U later. It's almost like missing the boat. If the Switch is still going to be around for the next three to four years, then yeah, giving us something that just gives you that natural upgrade ability to make games look good on a 4K television, even if that's just for a niche audience, would be the right move in my opinion. So Nintendo very well still could drop it this year and we still could not get a new Switch 2 until 2024. Like that's entirely possible, maybe 2025. We need to be logical here. The Switch is selling that gangbusters. Uh, it, it's getting to the point where it does feel like we need at least a little bit more power, even for some of Nintendo's first party games. You know, like Chronicles 3 is an example. We'll probably be running at 540p in handheld. There's no reason that we shouldn't get a Switch Pro and run that at a native 720p on that screen, a native 1080p that's upscaled to 4K. There's no reason we shouldn't be able to do that here in 2022. So again, I think it's more of a logic based reason that this mid-gen refresh should exist. Now, you can also point to the past where Nintendo's done the new Nintendo 3DS, the DSi, the Game Boy Color. We could talk about how Nintendo's upgraded their platforms over the years, especially the handhelds to more powerful versions. They've never really done it with home consoles, and Nintendo does call this a home console. Uh, you know, we haven't gotten an upgraded N64, although you could buy it, a little expansion thing and, and put it in there and get more RAM. Uh, they have done that. But in general, Nintendo hasn't released more powerful systems uh, mid-gen for home console. But if you consider that this is their only system and they have a track history of doing this with their handhelds, they claim it's still in the middle of the cycle. Their handhelds tend to have much longer life cycles than their home consoles anyways. Nintendo wants to sell Switch for as long as possible, buy as much time as they can and keep it relevant. I think by holiday of this year, dropping a more powerful mid-gen refresh system makes sense but you guys let me know what you think this isn't me trying to stir the rumor pot and tell you that all these people are saying this is going to happen this is just looking at the landscape looking at what nintendo has coming down the pipeline knowing that a game like xenoblade chronicles could use a bit more power knowing a game like breath of the wild 2 probably could use a bit more power knowing that third party games are obviously starting to lean heavily towards cloud at this point yeah we're actually still getting quite a few uh AAA third party releases like it hasn't actually slowed down we're just getting different like instead of doom and wolfenstein we're getting you know lego star wars skywalker saga and you know the golem game coming lord of the rings so like we're still getting AAA multi-platform games just different ones and you could argue well yeah, Wolfenstein and Doom, yeah, we got like four of those. They all came from the same developer who currently doesn't have any of those kind of games coming this year. So I'm just saying, I think it's lining up where it's perfectly reasonable to expect a Switch Pro in 2022. It won't, won't be called Switch Pro, by the way, just, just so you're aware. All right, folks, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Do you think my crackpot theory is right? Uh, do you think I'm just, whatever, Nintendo's done with this. We're getting a Switch 2 next year or something. I, I honestly think that the momentum is so great and we have a different president in charge, you know, Shintura Furukawa, that very much wants to extend the life of Switch as long as it can. And honestly, I think if a Switch Pro comes out this year and that signifies we got to wait another three years for, say, a Switch 2, I think that guarantees the Nintendo Switch uh, family of systems is going to be the number one selling platform of all time. And that might be something Nintendo wants to put a feather in their cap as well. What if what if we're, we're crazy to think that it can't pass PlayStation 2 and we really should be talking about, hey, if Switch Pro comes out, could this thing sell 200 million units? Crazy to think about, right? Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. I'll catch you guys in the next video.